All right, we're just going to go ahead and start. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you are as excited as we are as we hope our, as we host our second Appnovation and Money.com webinar together. To get today, we'll learn um, how to drive uh, customer value and innovation with enterprise agility, and how we can use Money.com and implement a digital in innovation strategy to drive business growth. Just as some housekeeping rules, if you can't hear me, please uh, check your audio settings or refresh your browser. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, pop them in the Q&A session and we'll get back to, we'll answer it at the end of this. And uh, lastly, this session will be recorded, so um, it'll be made available after this webinar. So I'd like to introduce you to the presenters today. My name is Julie. I'm the pre-sales engineer here at AppNovation. And um, I will do anything, everything, monday.com. And I will let Andrew and Rohini introduce themselves. Alrighty. Thanks. Thanks, Julie. Hi, everyone. Uh, Andrew here. Very excited to be here and looking forward to sharing and discussing everything enterprise agility with Rohini here today. Um, a bit about myself. I'm the managing director of Innovation based out in Hong Kong, servicing APAC customers. Um, enterprise agility is something I'm very passionate about. I work closely with our clients and partners almost on a daily basis on this topic, um, discussing usually in the context of digital transformation, being an advisor on their transformation journey. So hopefully you can take away a few notes from the lessons learned I've had in the next hour or so. Rahini? Thanks, Andrew. Hi, everyone. Very excited to be part of uh, this discussion. Uh, I'm Rohini. I'm here, uh, an industry lead at Monday uh, in their transformation and agile vertical. Uh, my background is in leading technical, um, digital and operational transformation in complex organization. Uh, and I've worked in a multitude of roles across various organizations and verticals uh, in close to sort of 20 years. Uh, my experiences um, are working closely with, uh, with business leaders and teams uh, and helping them evolve their, their operating model to serve their customers better. Um, so thank you so much for having me, Appnovation team, and I'm very, ex uh, very excited for the discussion in next hour. All right, thanks guys. On our agenda today, we will learn about the key trends shaping the future of work, take a look at the journey towards enterprise agility, then we will learn how to implement it with Monday.com following a demo. And then we'll do a quick introduction of the Appnovation and Monday.com partnership, answer any Q&A. And then if you stick around to the very end, we do have a limited time offer that you do not want to miss. So I'll hand it over to Rohini to introduce the key trends shaping the future of work. Thank you, Julie. Um, so yeah, so I think, you know, we, we are really seeing a, a very different momentum around future of work shaping up. Uh, uh, especially in sort of, you know, the past two years that have gone by. Um, there are a lot of things which are top of mind for leaders at the moment, uh, obviously, you know, more so from business perspective, uh, but largely of it is that how they're really bringing that workforce um, to back either it's sort of, you know, back to work, back to offices, gaining productivity. Um, from the market itself, like if you look at the, you know, what we're seeing those as key, those key strengths are um, global pandemic is like the impact of global pandemic is still looming largely on us. Um, HBR in the article mentioned that when COVID subsidize, subsided, subsides, uh, the world is going to look like remarkably, remarkably different. Um, now that's, that's, almost shaping up right now, right? So uh, habits have changed. We have evolved uh, into different people, uh, into sort of, you know, different um, uh, family and work ecosystem as well, because, you know, we're getting to spend a lot of time with family and away from work uh, physically. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously, like from a consumer perspective, if you look at it, uh, we've been through both demand shock and supply shock in a very short period of time. Um, and it still continued to ripple, uh, you know, demanding more from the businesses and, you know, almost keeping them on toes in terms of what's coming next. Um, then I think if you look at it, probably zoom back a bit and uh, look at 
what's been the trend in the since the early 2000? Um, we're seeing more and more businesses are seeking investment in technology and new business models. Uh, but again, at that macro level, there's a reality loom looming over them. According to Peterson Institute of International Economics, there has been a steady decline in labor productivity in most um, countries, um, and mostly of them are advanced countries since mid 2000. Now, this is uh, obviously have negate almost negating that impact of digital digitization um, and shining light on efficiencies or lack of. So, you know, the, the cost of operation and optimization is very much top of mind for business leaders. Andrew, do you want to shine light on digital trust, you know, the rest of the two, because I think it's very, uh, very top of mind for you as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, totally agree with you, right? Look, if we look at digital acceleration or transformation, right? Technology is ever changing at a very fast pace. We all knew that, right? The term digital transformation popped up really almost 10 years ago now. But before that, and we were calling it something else, right? Business transformation, change management, you know, and then we're going for six sigma and lean. But what's really happened in the last three years because of COVID, um, people are now forced to accelerate their digital transformation plan. Right. If you look at here in Hong Kong, Hang Seng Bank, one of the oldest bank in Hong Kong, they've just announced that they will have a virtual bank uh, in the metaverse in Sandbox. Now, this is all happening while um, we're getting our head around the technology. Try to remember, you know, just about two, three years ago um, here in APAC, myself, um, I would never consider using a, a food delivery platform. Right. And I'm someone that prefers to shop for retail, for example, that needs to have the physical touch and try something on. Right. But now we've moved on very quickly in the last two years into uh, we're working with retailers to build up their virtual and AR experience and in-shop experience. Um, restaurants have adapted very quickly to change of the menu to jump on board these technology platforms to enable to them to continue to sell and create new channels to their customers. So indeed, in the last few years, the COVID situation have really, you know, awakened us uh, to this situation. And this, this it takes me back to a term that I used to coin um, the risk of not investing, right? We always talk about return of investment, but we sometimes neglect the, the, the thinking of, well, if we don't do this, if we lose the competitive edge, what if something happens? Um, I think that's one of the key that we want to cut and cover today, right? How do we be a step ahead of the market? So in case of uh, not big market change, like what we've experienced in the last few years, how do we adapt? Now, furthermore, the last point here you can see on the slide is the talent shortage. Now, I know uh, in, from, from talking to Rohini as well in Australia, there's been a lot of new job opening, especially with the new way of working now, people working from home, remote working, it's, it's just the new norm. In Hong Kong, the latest data shows that, you know, over 25,000, uh, sorry, 250,000 rather, which is a huge amount of talents have migrated out of Hong Kong in the last 12 months. This is the biggest pool we've ever seen in, in, in the population of 7 million people of Hong Kong. That impacts everyone especially again on the topic of digital innovation and enterprise agility, these are talent that are very, very scarce in the first place. So what I mean is we really have to be fostering a really good culture of work and a good ex working experience um, so that our colleague, our team members and organization are willing to stick around and stay with us and create a good working experience for them. But I think that's really the key for today, right? How do we achieve enterprise agility that's not just about IT, not just about business making money, but a whole organization where everyone has alignment. Next slide, please, Julie. Now, given the driver and, and trend that we just discussed, I'm sure most of you would agree that, you know, or have experienced that in a certain extent of the impact that we just talked about. So before we can talk about how do we get to enterprise agility, right? Uh, I'm a manager and consultant by trade. I think we need to quickly align on with ourselves on what do we mean by we say enterprise agility. I think most of us has heard of the term uh, Scrum or Agile or Kanban. Just now when Heaney uh, talked about some of the trends that you know, enterprise agility can really help with. Now, if you look at the research and literature outside, there's a, the definition of enterprise agility is not very clear, right? It's described with a lot of buzzwords such as lean, lean startup, agile, digital innovation, strategy, portfolio management, alignment. Those are all surrounding and related topics. What you see on the screen is my personal definition. And 
I've worth, I, I, and what it is is to me, right, is the ability to adapt to change in order to continually drive the value to the customers. That's very key, value to customers. It's not just about scaling agile way of being across IT, but at the organization level, I'm talking about beyond IT. Doing so helps us provide a stronger innovation base. We reduce race, we increase profit, and we achieve a better time to market with high quality output, which really ultimately leads to the greater customer experience, uh, uh, expectation and satisfaction and our competitors. I want to highlight here as well, when we say customer satisfaction, that does not necessarily just mean external customers, right? Just now we talk about culture. Our internal customers is, is also a key stakeholder for us. The end game here is, is make sure we give our competitive uh, edge to both our existing customers, our internal staff, and the new potential market in this very fast changing environment. I mean, it took me some, some time and almost, almost over five, seven years to work smith this definition. Rohini, I would love to get your thought on this. What do you think? What did uh, I miss? <laughs> oh, yes, totally, totally on point, Andrew. Uh, I think I wouldn't have been able to summarize it well, uh, any any well than, than what you did. Um, I think, uh, you know, just to resonate what you just said, it is about putting the, the customer at the heart of everything that you do. Um, so, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, the, the value creation piece or in terms of the customer experience piece, it is about, uh, it's larger to do with, you know, are you making the right choices? Are you investing right? Are you nimble enough to change as things change, uh, priorities change? And then, um, you know, topic that's so dear to my heart and you touched on it is around culture. So that itself, like how easy it is for, you know, for your workforce to come together and collaborate on that customer mission. Um, or are they still sort of living in their own silos to, you know, just optimizing in their own world? Um, that is key to success in this space. So, yeah, so, you know, I think the enterprise agility is the, the nirvana that all organizations are hoping to achieve. And it's very much agnostic of any, uh, any framework as per se, yes, yeah. I'm very glad to hear that. Well, now that we've got a baseline, right, let's look at the kind of milestones of agility then, Julie. Um, again, I would love your input at one point for this, uh, Rohini, but, you know, when we look at agil agility, how do we start? Where do we start, right? And 10 years ago, when I first started my agile transformation journey with clients and with myself, as a matter of fact, we used to advise organizations to start at the base level you see on the screen, right? The agile team, right? What you do, you choose a small or short project, one that is low risk, and you start with one or two scrum teams to get the team agility going, right? Here, your goal is really to start trialing a new way of working. We focus on flexibility, communication between roles, negotiating business requirements, starting with relative sizing and story points. And you start to foster the agile mindset and culture. We want, to, we want the team to focus on MVP, right? Minimum viable products and release in a shorter cycle. Instead of releasing once a year, we start to go nine months, six months, three months, and even further down, right? Now I said over 10 years ago, because since then you know, from my learning, what I now advise people uh, step, uh, embarking on this journey is slightly different. We'll get to that in a moment. Then you look at the second stage, so about five to seven years ago for me, right? Um, the concept of scaled agile really started to bloom. Because once we had that baseline agile team working well, what we find the next challenge is, well, we're going to have 10 of these agile teams or 10 scrum teams, right? Then we don't have enough time for stand-up, for example. We don't have enough talent in the role of PO, uh, product owner or scrum masters. Or there are a lot more inter-team dependency, right? You know, a lot of us have worked in large project, large system projects. There are, we're talking about 100 plus people on a program of work. Well, in, in Agile, you, you want to foster a smaller cross-functional team where communication is simple and transparent. So all this difficulty makes it um, very difficult to start measuring performance and it becomes impediment when we go to the second stage. Now, Rohini, I know you happen to have a lot of knowledge and practical experience in this space. I mean, what do you see? Do you see some of these, uh, what are the, some of the most common Agile practice or methodology that you see out there? Um, yeah, no, I think as what we see is really a mix of everything, right? So there's no silver bullet to getting it right. You almost need to adapt to your own needs. And I think um, that is 
predominantly what we're seeing in terms of the adoption. So uh, when it comes to framework, right, they're the best of the breed in terms of like, you know, um, if you're looking at portfolio management, like you might be adopting to lean portfolio practices, but then you're still doing, choosing to do Scrum at scale. Uh, so you're not going, you know, in heavily investing in safe as well. Uh, as you go into more, more maturity, then you're going down, like, you know, defining your product instead of doing projects. And that's when you sort of start to lean more on frameworks like less uh, which are which are more advanced um, in that space so again i think it's sort of like looking at what you're where you're at with your journey uh, adapting to a crawl walk run uh, scenario and being very sort of you know very uh, focused on the business outcome. I think that's the most important piece. It's not about what you adopt, what framework you adopt. Uh, it is about the business outcome and the overarching objective of why uh, we are doing this. That's the most important thing. Um, and you know, somehow, uh, and then obviously you get your, you know, your other setup in terms of the framework uh, laddered up to that. But that's not the, the, you know, that's not the silver bullet itself. I think you're 100% right. Like, uh, I think it's, it, it might be an APAC culture as well, or maybe it's me, my, just own, my own perception. A lot of my customers always come, hey, Andrew, I, I want to find the best solution. I want that silver bullet. But unfortunately, there's just no simple silver bullet. Like, every adaptation is slightly different. And even if you follow a, a large framework, like say for the Spotify model, there's, there's always some difference. And that makes sense because the agile transformation journey in itself should be an agile experience and an agile experiment, right? You try something, if it works, great. You adapt it, take it on board. If something doesn't work, you need to shift gear and start pivoting. Now, so we kind of have, so when we talk about then the enterprise agility level, right? So we look at the top, right? The key milestone here is really about having alignment across the organization, both across functions and level. We want to have aligned business strategy, objective, which all teams across the company can understand and can relate to on the day-to-day -day job, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when you create that really good culture uh, and work experience. You know your work has an impact to the company. It gives meaning to your work. It's not just about IT releasing faster or working in sprints, or if you're working in safe, about agile release trains, right? It's definitely part of that journey. It's the part of the practice, but it's about having that agility across different functions. I'm talking about marketing, legal, procurement, finance, and IT, indeed, right? So they all need to be able to adapt to the change and pivot with the market when these things change happen, as we discussed before on the digital trends that we're seeing in the world. Now, here's my lesson learned, like I said before at the beginning, right? I used to recommend to start at the bottom, right? Trial and try one or two team and then go to the next level. But from my experience, that journey, if we do it that way, right? It could take you anywhere between like the shortest time for a small organization, about 100 SME organization, two to three years to get to the next level, or all the way up, I've seen, you know, companies that have done seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, or not to, and even not to mention the numbers of failure to adapt agile transformation, or to achieve the enterprise agility, right? Companies may get stuck at the scaled agile level is quite common because we've got plenty of research and experience now on how to scale this agile team, but then it, it, the, the amount of changes that the organization have to go through or even have to kind of scrap halfway through to start again, that's a big blocker. So what I recommend our customers now is, yes, we still start at the bottom, right? But we keep a very good eye on the second level of the scale of agile, right? We start training in day one about, hey, this is not how it's gonna stay forever. We're gonna make it something that's whole organization. Um, and we also need to have very clear alignment at the top level from the executives of, Yes, enterprise agility is the North Star of what we want to achieve, to achieve that customer satisfaction, to achieve that value to our customer. It's not just for IT, it's for the whole organization. What does that mean? This means that the organization and chain, uh, a conversation and changes for the business department starts at day one. We don't have to wait till IT is agile and then we go tackle marketing and then we go tackle finance. This way, we're actually taking advantage of an MVP approach, right? We may not have the entire organization achieving agility uh, from the get-go, but along the way, we'll have cross-section portion of the organization, right? Innovation projects that involves marketing and finance and IT all at the same time to have that ability to adapt. We make a change 
we take a more top down and bottom approach nowadays. Now, again, that has saved me uh, and many organizations years of hassle to, and, and the change resistance. Um, again, love your input on this, Rohini, because you're also an expert in this space uh, around the world. What, what path and approach have you seen work best for you and the kind of organization you work with? Uh, yeah, so I think it's sort of like um, uh, definitely so, you know, what you um, what you said is, is quite spot on in terms of that approach. Um, change is, is a big, big part of of, you know, any transformation. Uh, so when when now people I think earlier when people were looking at um, agile, they were more looking at with a methodology lens. So if you were doing stand ups, you were doing retrospective, then you're being agile. Um, uh, and then now it's shifted. It's sort of like, you know, how are you moving towards an agile mindset? Uh, and that is what, you know, your a very strong change management program around bringing agility to life in our day to day world uh, looks like. So the idea is around like you want to help people understand the why, but also define the what. So I think what is very, very important. So what are we trying to achieve? What are the key benefits? What is the, the objective around moving to um, this way of working? And then bring the teams together and help them sort of, you know, define their own ways of working um, while being very strong on creating those guardrails around collaboration, uh, around alignment, um, and that sort of like will help you with the experimentation as well. So I think not trying to do experiments for the sake of experiments, but being very definite in terms of the outcome that you want as an organization after that experiment has has done, has sort of, you know, ended or you have created a milestone. Um, and that is something we at Monday are like, you know, we are a big, big, uh, you know, advocate for that, that um, we want organizations to be able to define their own journey. Just give me one minute. I need to move my hands, do a bit of a dance. Lights are on. Um, so we want, uh, we want organizations to be able to define their own journey, find their own path. And we almost like seek that organizations uh, use a nimble tool or a nimble platform to bridge those silos, which will occur like, you know, when you're running a change program or a change out of that size. Um, so, yeah, so I think that's to me is very important. And then obviously a, a lot of works required to be done on the culture and the leadership um, at, uh, at the same time. So that, that is what a true holistic um, approach to enterprise agility to me looks like. Definitely. I do love your dance move very much. I'm going to join you on that as well. <laughs> um, I guess uh, just to quickly sum up the next two slides, um, Julie, if you can go to the next one. I mean, to back it up with some data, right? Indeed, well, what we're seeing is some 83% of large corporates are adapting to agile and half of them, you know, are starting to start beyond just IT, right? They're starting at the strategic level, investing and funding a long-term vision, looking at the value of that company it's supposed to deliver the customers and doing so usually by value stream mapping. So very from the very beginning, they know, have a very clear uh, idea of what the value this business is supposed to deliver to its customers. They're aware of the culture change and the change resistance that will experience for the journey. And then we need to try to address them. Like, I mean, if you see a block in front of you, you're not just gonna keep walking straight. You see a block of this change and impediment, you gotta have come up with ways to work around it. I think very soon we're gonna to have to see a uh, demo from, from Rohini and see how some of the tooling can really help us out on, on that area. Uh, next please, Julie. So in sum, let's bring it together, right? Uh, look, agile journey in that scale naturally comes with a lot of challenge and setback at the team and day-to-day -day level. By identifying these kind of, what we see on the screen, these challenges and addressing them up front and keep them in mind, um, it, it just gives you a better roadmap, right? You want to go on a journey, you want to make sure you have a planned of route. You might not follow it exactly, but you're going to have a look at how, what direction you'll be. So I think the four key, and we're going to have uh, pass on to Rohini very soon and see how Monday.com can help us align, um, is about alignment, managing work, adaptation, and push away some of those rigid practice and tools, right? Because when you think about it, an enterprise needs to go to enterprise agility usually because they are of a certain size or it takes time to get to a certain size, which means they have a lot of legacy, 
legacy system, legacy process, legacy policies, right? So how do we try to um, bypass, it's not quite the quite way, but catalyze that experience uh, with some of the modern tooling? I think that's where I'm really looking forward to the demonstration from Rohini. So fire away. Uh, sorry, I do want to mention uh, case as well. Um, I just want to mention, because what we talked about just now, a lot of it is supported by research, but you might ask, hey, Andrew, what do you mean? Like, who are the people that are doing these agile transformation that you talk of, you speak of, right? Um, here's a quote from one of our recent clients, Debbie Sof. It's a travel, a B2B travel company based in China with a global footprint. Um, their goal is really to about support and manage projects uh, with a more automated way, as well as providing visibility and transparency across the product uh, and the portfolio. They, um, we've just recently uh, started uh, the journey with them with money.com. Uh, it's one of the biggest implementation in the region. Uh, we're talking about 400 plus users here. And this is a call like to communicate more efficiently and make our work more productive. That's what they're already seeing from day one of joining monday.com and using the enterprise plan to achieve the growth goals across the office, not just in China, but globally, right? So let's see how it can be done um, through monday.com. Now fire away, I'm sorry about that, Rahini. <laughs> Hi, um, okay, awesome. Um, Judy, can we move to the next slide, please? Yes, awesome. Okay, so I want to start first with the essence of uh, of the our agile solution uh, for organizations who are you know who are either beginning or uh, are in a in an agile transformation journey. So what we enable with this way for you in terms is basically to bring strategy to life with an agile platform um, that moves and scales uh, with you. Um, here, uh, the key word is an agile platform. And I think, you know, we've, we've spoken in sort of net last 40 minutes and Andrew, Reson, you know, you, were, um, you shared your thoughts in terms of, you know, the, the journey itself as organizations work through the challenges that they have. Um, and in order for you to work through that, that whole change management aspect of a change of this size uh, and our transformation of this size, uh, you need to have a platform which uh, allows you for agility, which is built for agility from get go. So this is quite important. And I think this is something which uh, we hold strong with Monday uh, from a product and solution perspective as well. As well. And again, this is something which, which I'll show you in next, um, in next five to 10 minutes, uh, but it, it's agile, as, it is as agile as you are. So it sort of, you know, moves, moves with you. Um, it enables your organization uh, to plan and execute business priorities while keeping, uh, you know, your uh, departments and teams perfectly aligned. Um, and then it talk, it's very fast to, to implement uh, across your organization. 80% of our user base is actually non-technical and that's where we're seeing greater, much, much greater adoption option um, for not just the tool, but also the methodology. So, you know, we have marketing teams adopting to agile ways of working, content teams, uh, sales teams, uh, uh, and, you know, obviously technical teams who have been doing this for years and years. Uh, it's intuitive for onboarding, and then it has seamless integration, so it works very well with your existing tools, uh, whether it's it be Teams, Slack, uh, Jira, which you know a lot of our technical teams uh, still you know want to use. And I I think our design philosophy or product philosophy is that we're not there to replace a tool; we're really there to integrate and seem have all these different sort of you know uh, modern day digital tools work together in harmony. Um, so, and while, you know, while we create that agility and efficiency and transparency across your workflows. Um, next slide. Thank you. Um, so what, what does the solution do? Uh, so, you know, uh, to add a, a bit about the solution, uh, let me just mention what 
you know, what we can facilitate. Um, so we, we align teams to high level business objectives. You can manage your uh, initiatives end to end, uh, right from the portfolio level to program roadmap and sprints, backlogs, uh, all of it. Uh, you enable, uh, you're able to enable continuous feedback loops either by, you know, sending out um, feedback forms or even sort of helping connect, you know, your, um, overarching goals to how teams are executing and as things move and change you are able to pass on that information in real time um, both to the stakeholders but also to the teams on the ground and most importantly what you through the tool you would be able to increase adoption and implement your agile practices uh, much much more seamlessly because of its ease of use uh, and you know quicker on adoption and onboarding uh, both to the technical teams but most importantly to your non technical users uh, in the organization Um, so we present to you today uh, a unified work management. Before we dive into the demo, I would like to show you at a glance what the structure of the solution is built on. Um, again, you know, depending on where you are at with the journey uh, or for your transformation, you can pick and choose in terms of what's your most immediate need and build from that. Um, it's highly flexible. It's designed to enable you to, you know, scale as you scale, um, and it's able to sort of, you you know, run through that execution seamlessly across uh, the entire ecosystem of your organization. So what you see here is uh, your strategy. So how we bring OKRs to life, objective key results for, for those who don't know. So this is, again, a really uh, a good framework for you to, you know, have a very definite North Star for the team, define what. Uh, then portfolio management, do demand management, uh, look at risk and sort of, you know, work through your entire portfolio life cycle within Monday. Uh, initiatives end to end, managing your end to end roadmaps for initiative or programs of work. Uh, teams collaboration space, so team comes and connect, uh, work through their, their, you know, daily, uh, whether it's daily or by a um, fortnightly sprint backlog on a daily basis, sorry. Uh, feature releases, so how you broadcast what's happening uh, to your roadmap, to your initiative, to your projects, uh, to your stakeholders and also to your customers that can be done within Monday. And then feedback dashboards, which help you connect with your customers, but also with your teams as well. Um, so that is sort of what our unified work management um, solution looks like within Monday. Now let's see how that works. So I'm gonna take over the sharing. Okay, so what you see here uh, is uh, before we dive into the specific solution for Monday, I would like to explain to you just structurally how Monday works. So Monday is built on, um, you know, a concept of if you were if you were to simplify it as Lego bricks. So with the in those Lego bricks, you can design solutions to your specific needs and specific workflow that you want to define. Um, what we call here is, uh, what you see here is different workspaces. And within those workspaces, you have boards. Uh, boards are, uh, you know, would define what the work, like what, what the actual work that you're and details around the work itself. Um, and you, but you're able to change, you know, depending on sort of, you know, what the requirements are very easily. Now, from the solution perspective, as you know, on the left, what you see is are like those four, um, six items that I talked about. So strategy, uh, you have your OKRs here and um, then portfolio. So everything end to end portfolio uh, that you can do backlog, budgets, risk impediments, benefit, uh, benefit identification and tracking. Um, then you can have end to end program roadmaps as well. So here, you know, you see two examples of that. Um, and then space for teams. Um, 
where they can run their quarterly planning uh, and also, you know, sprints um, along the way. So they have specific sort of area for running their sprints as well. And then you have your feature releases and customer feedback uh, area. So let's dive into it one by one. Uh, given I work a lot with the team and, you know, for uh, as Agile, you know, almost says, start, start with the team, they are, you know, they are the really uh, custodians of, uh, of your culture and, um, and sort of, you know, the, ha the work that happens on the ground. Um, so looking at, uh, if you were to look at teams specifically, um, this is what a typical sort of sprint board look like. So if you were a technical team or a non-technical team, uh, you would be able to run um, as, you know, uh, either fortnightly or weekly sprints uh, here. So what you see here is um, an epic, or a user story, sorry, in this case. Uh, and as you click them, you can see the task description, uh, who's the owner, what the status of that story is, the detail as well of the task, uh, the estimated story points, link to GitHub. Um, and then you're able to also see the hierarchy. So it shows to you the link to the epics. Um, it's taking time, but it shows you what, you know, which epic is it linked to as well. So you can see where, which part of the puzzle this particular story fits in. Um, the teams can then start to do their planning. So we have these visual dashboards uh, over here. It shows to you um, uh, like, you know, uh, planned sprints, uh, planned story points and upcoming sprint, my capacity, uh, planning overview of, you know, planned versus estimate, sorry, actual versus estimate. Uh, it gives you a different overview of the, uh, you know, the task breakdown as well. Now you would, be wondering how does that actually, where, where this information is coming from and how is this is getting created? Now, this is something, um, again, is native to Monday and this talks to that Lego bricks analogy. Um, we have this widget center. So you have, you know, you're adding a widget is sim as simple as that. Uh, you're um, cre like you're basically selecting what kind of widget you want. We have quite a, a big list of widget um, over here, just gonna move this in the widget center. So you see that there are quite a number of widgets that you can add um, depending on the visualization that you need. I'm gonna just use a battery widget over here. So it's, see, it's just created a battery widget. Um, and then I can easily uh, run a filter based on, you know, what I would want here. I want sprint to status of all the stories. So I've connected to that. Um, so it tells me the status of sprint to stories. And the, the other uh, amazing thing of working um, in Monday is that all the, uh, on the platform itself is that you will, see all the widgets are live data. So they are, you know, interact interactable um, rather than being static. It's not like running a BI report there. So you can actually see here, I see that, you know, what's being done which basically means that I can provide contextual information. I can get contextual information and I can also provide contextual information. So I said, this is being done. I can look at the, the comment that has been made um, on, the, on the, that particular user story, who owns it. Um, and, you know, also look at any files and attachments and, you know, other things that you, you probably would be interested in, in terms of looking at that user story itself. So that is how sort of the, the dashboard and the widgets work. This is one dashboard um, over here. Um, Similarly, uh, for the teams, they can define their own roadmaps uh, as well. So, you know, they can, they have, we have this roadmap view. Uh, and what you see here is the, the roadmap of all the um, epics and stories that they are working on at the moment. So it's, um, it gives you a nice little view of Q2 work that is happening. Again, it is all interactable. You can see you can see progress and priority, uh, etc. 
Now, one of the things that we get asked a lot is that, uh, what about the existing tools? So as I mentioned earlier as well, we um, at Monday, we work with other tools and that's again, is our product philosophy um, that we, we do not eliminate, we're not there to eliminate a tool, we work, we're there to work with synergies and a very common tool that is used uh, in uh, teams and environment is Jira. So we have, um, uh, you know, what you see here is we're pulling information from JIRA. So it has the JIRA issue type, and then uh, it has subsequent Monday related information. It can be also statuses and updates that you're getting in from JIRA. And how it works is that we have a, we have this easy to use integration center. We have, I think about 200 odd apps. Um, that we work with, um, it will. Um, this will. This is a Jira integration. So again, a low code, no code uh, work platform where you can very easily set up these integrations with other third party tools. In this case, it's Jira, and then you can form connections through our automation. So you see an automation over here where as things get updated and created, it will sync that information live within Monday. Similarly, it will also push information directly to JIRA. So it is a two-way integration um, that we do. So this eliminates the, it almost sort of makes the hurdle around change management very easy where you're not asking your teams to move from one um, tool to the other, but you're really creating synergy. So your dev teams can continue to work in the tool of their preference, but then the, uh, the other pieces around managing roadmaps, managing, uh, managing sort of, you know, objectives, dashboarding, reporting, non-technical team work, working with sales and marketing, you can do within Monday. And I think that is what we have seen our customers use it more and more for as well. However, we have everything available uh, even for our technical teams to, to continue to use Monday instead of you know, any other tool. So it has all the plugins to suit their needs um, as well. Now, again, um, as a team, um, we are like, you know, for team and leaders, it's very important. So we have these, again, visual dashboards, similar one to what I showed you, the way it connects. Here, we are getting like live retro themes coming in from all the team's board. So as leaders um, or, you know, uh, managers in the organization, we can clearly understand what are the key themes coming across from different teams. Uh, so again, a very good visualization and use of data that's already sitting in, in team level boards. Um, and then we, we also have this integration, which I know is uh, people will find very useful. You can actually work directly. So this is a Jira integrate, Miro integration, sorry. Um, and you can run your team brainstorming session directly within Monday. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not showing properly, but it's supposed to show you. Um, so you can create like a, a visual card and that would, um, it's too small, but yeah. Um, so you can create the card over here and you can do your brainstorming and collaboration directly within Monday as well. Um, what you over here, what you see is again, roadmap for cross. So if you're running big programs of work, which cut across multiple uh, teams um, and also within multiple, um, uh, you know, multiple um, quarters or multiple years, uh, you can define those roadmaps uh, quite clearly here within Monday. Uh, you, can, you can see there's a backlog, there's a Q2 roadmap. I have uh, these epic level stories, um, which are um, defined and then, you know, they are being broken down into those team level boards. Uh, status priority, then I can clearly see which team is it assigned to. Uh, so the teams that are working on this Epic, who's a product owner, Scrum Master, and then dependencies. So this is, again, is a really good way for us to show interdependencies. Um, and then as teams come together, say, for example, if I'm a product owner or a product manager for that particular initiative, I can present a view like this where I know clearly that in order for me to do 
um, you know, this story uh, over here, there's a clear dependency on the platform team. Uh, and if things do not work out, if they changed, um, this is automatically updated. So you see the knock-on effect that would come um, as timelines change or priorities change as well. The other thing which I was talking around alignment is that for everything that we're doing, we have it connected to, uh, you know, the higher level mission. So, you know, it shows you clearly that this is the, uh, this is sort of yeah, the OKR and that's what, that's why we're doing this, this piece of work, this user story, and then with which big initiative um, in the in the organization uh, that it's connected to so it really creates the sense of purpose very very clearly and transparency around why is this needs to be done or why this is a priority so that can be managed all the way through from um, setting those objectives defining those programs of work and down to roadmap and team sprint planning level um, coming to the portfolio backlog, again, you can do your entire demand management. So, you know, you can define your portfolio very clearly um, over here. So here you see the new ideas initiatives that are coming through. They are managed through a very easy way for us to manage that is through is through a forms functionality. Um, And you have, you know, you have the forms functionality. And then what is, again, as a, you know, somebody, um, if, they, if somebody is here from a portfolio team, again, uh, using those widgets, those building blocks, you can create very easy, simple uh, portfolio dashboard. What you see here is that it's connected to 11 boards. Uh, you can have data coming in from multiple boards across the organization set up. Uh, within Monday, and you can create easy to use intuitive uh, live data um, and interactable data uh, to understand your portfolio health, uh, to understand, you know, your roadmap health of what's happening in your roadmap. Um, and then you can also look at your, you know, key risk items, um, what's happening with the risk, your budget breakdowns across the across the portfolio and then also understand uh, your resourcing needs so you know how uh, what's the capacity of your teams and how they are performing currently uh, in terms of that capacity so you know what uh, a really good example here is that what you see here is red uh, which means the team team is at over capacity in those sprints um, so yeah so again some very easy and simple visualization that you can use I'm going to pause there. There's lots to cover. Uh, it's, uh, but I, I hope it gives you a, a strong flavor of the solution and how it can, uh, how Monday can help you uh, in in terms of you know being that platform that brings the synergies and creates alignment around in the organization and creates that cross collaboration across different teams, uh, both technical and non technical. Over to you, Julie. Thank you. Um, we can, yeah, we can move to the other two, like to your slides. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for the amazing demo, Rohini. Um, it's very useful. I hope everyone's able to take some pointers and use it within their Monday.com workspace. Uh, so now we're just gonna move over to a quick Q&A session. Uh, firstly, we would like to do a poll question just to find a little bit more, find out a little bit more about our audience. So I'm just going to quickly pull up a poll up here. Give me a second. All right. So the first question is, what would you categorize as your top challenges with transformation? So I'm just going to give people a few minutes, a few seconds to answer the questions. All right, we're getting some answers in here. It's very interesting. Uh, 
All right, I'm just gonna quickly end the poll now and share the results. So as we can see, I think most people are saying alignment between business objectives. And uh, secondly, rigid practices and tools, adoption to new changes and managing work. Do you guys have, um, Andrew, do you have any, uh, you know, or suggestions for any of this or any input? Yeah, no, that's, that's actually very interesting because um, one, of, one of the questions, let's address one of the questions from the audience as well, which is how do we use Monday to align business objectives? Well, I think Rohini just now very quickly showed um, the transparency side of things, right? The tool is very easy um, to show where are things at and also have inline comment and collaboration. I think that's one way as a tool it can help. Um, I think at the beginning of the journey, definitely uh, is very useful, like I said at the beginning, to have that top level alignment. And then that can be easily then translate into a tool or the process that supports it. That's my thought on that, Rohini. Um, yeah, so like as I said, uh, it, you know, we, we can clearly define, um, you know, that top down roll, a top down cascading and also roll up when I, and more from information perspective, less from hierarchy. Um, and as things change, so, you know, if your target changes or your objective changes, um, you're cascading that information almost in real time. The other, uh, you know, uh, the other aspects around business alignment and business objectives is around how, how we're measuring it. Uh, so you can make those goals again, um, you know, very visible, but at the same time, you're able to measure then and create visibility around how you're performing against those goals and objectives also very, very clear. Uh, so that then, you know, there is less discrepancy around why we're doing it. Um, and you're also knowing that, you know, what you're doing is whether it's being effective or not. Um, one of the things which you, which I see organizations do is like make investment decisions based on how we're performing. So sometimes what happens start of the year, they would have done a million dollar investment on a particular project or a particular outcome uh, with certain assumptions, but that start of the year, things have changed. We have a pandemic rolling. So do we need to move change, uh, move money for to another objective uh, because it's lagging behind, like how you adjust your portfolio? Uh, that kind of insights you can get very, very clearly with, with Monday. And actually, Rohini, I think you then kind of touched on the second question, which is about um, when we go through this agile transformation process, right? When is it relevant to start investigating in different tool sets? Um, I think you, you hit a very good point here, which is to look at the portfolio and adapt it, right? I mean, it's the same thing. It's a bit of chicken and egg, right? If you ask me, I think you should look at some tool sets uh, from day one from the beginning. but. The question is not so much when it's what, about how much and which one, right? I usually recommend people to find platforms and tools that are number one modern um, and easily, you know, adaptive, right? So in terms of usage, uh, for example, flexibility to, to get uh, processes on, on built into the tooling, the platform, uh, as well as the ease of use, right? Because you don't want to have spend half a year implementing a tool and then another half a year train, training your staff. Yeah. Right? That's, that's one year gone, right? So I, I think that's also very relevant. Anything to add to that? If not, we can go for one oh, more question. I think uh, quite spot on there. And I think one thing that I want to share light on is that, you know, we're living in a different world. If you were to ask me this question two years ago as an agilist or as somebody as a, um, as a transformation leader, I said, work in Excel. It's like, you know, we're all in office. Uh, just get it going, like let's stay agile and nimble, but that would no longer make sense because we're living in a hybrid world. Uh, we're more adopting to a work from home uh, working scenario um, and our diverse workforce is living everywhere. So I think uh, that's why like adopting to a digitally enabled tool, uh, which is still agile, which is still nimble um, and which is easy to use and easy to get going. Uh, needs to be sort of, you know, the first starting point. Great. Look, I think, unfortunately, our time is up, right? So we'll still have a few more questions. Let us take that offline and answer you offline with a follow-up email. Um, I think, Julie, you got some special surprise and special deal for our audience today? Definitely. Um, just a quick overview. I'm just going to quickly introduce our partnership. If you guys don't know who we are, we're a full-service digital consultancy. 
and preferred partner of Monday.com. So we'll service you, you know, within the implementation setup, automation in, and integration optimization, and much more. So if you feel free to contact us after this webinar, if you have any more questions. And uh, yeah, the best part of the whole webinar, I'm joking. <laughs> but there is a limited time offer that we want to provide. Uh, you will get two free sessions, one with a Monday.com solution consultant based in Tel Aviv, and myself here based in Abnovation, where we can help answer any questions you might have around your Monday.com platform. So make sure you scan the QR code and fill out the form. So I'll just leave this on for a few seconds. And uh, yeah, just to wrap things up, we hope that you've learned something new and uh, where you can implement a digital innovation strategy and drive your business um, growth and add value to your customers. So just a reminder um, that this session will be made available after this call with a follow-up email. And uh, yeah, we thank everyone for attending this webinar and hope you have a great rest of the afternoon.